welcome to Cool Camera Corner. In this brand new series I take a look at old cameras that I happen to find interesting and cool. Some of them are genuine classics and have rightfully earned their place in history. Others were just ordinary cameras that people once used every day without thinking anything of, but in all cases they can still be used today to take fantastic photographs. So without further ado, let's have a look at today's camera. <laughs> Cool. Right, so in this episode we're going to be having a look at a very illustrious camera, it's the Olympus OM4. Those of you that uh, want to look at some other Olympus cameras, you can have a look on the screen here, just in that sort of bit of the screen that bit there, and you can have a look at the comparison video that we did the other day with the Leica and the OM1, and uh, we'll be making some direct cam uh, camera comparisons between those cameras uh, yeah. during this video. Uh, but I want to introduce Ollie, who's a good friend of mine and a fantastic photographer and camera collector, and Thank this you. is your own camera, I believe. This is another one of my babies. It's, um, I think this is actually quite an early one. It's, it's had a bit of a hard life, um, but it, it works a treat. Fantastic. You know, it's nice and reliable. Um, it's taken a beating and it's still snapping away. So. This is the thing with these Olympus cameras. The build quality of these Japanese uh, cameras was so, so good. Let's start with a little bit of the, um, the, the history of the OM series, because it was quite a, yeah. a, an illustrious sort of range of cameras, wasn't it? Yeah, um, starting with the OM1. Yeah. Um, now, as I understand it, the OM1 and the OM4 were quite similar, and then there was the, or the OM1 and the OM3 were quite similar, and yeah. the 2 and the 4 were, were different. Uh, they were more, like, they had more sort of bells and whistles and, you know, sort of electronics and things like that. Yeah. Um, well, so you've got the OM1 and the 3, and they're mm. both, um, they're both uh, completely mechanical, mm, okay. whereas the 2s and 4s need batteries for the shutters. Right. But 1s um, and 2s are very similar, and 3s mm. and 4s are very similar. Okay. Um, so, I mean, this is this is the electronic latest, greatest, forcing you all advancing to and this is really where it, where it, where the line ended as well, wasn't it? I mean, they, they, yeah. they got to this. This was the pinnacle, and uh, and then there were no no more after that. And in fact, really, I mean, after this, um, it, it took until the OMD stuff started to come out a couple of years ago before Olympus really got back yeah. into making you know great cameras. And uh, if you look at the uh, if you look at this and then compare it to um, you know the sort of current crop of OMDs, they, they look indeed very yeah. similar, especially in the black. Yeah. yeah, well, exactly. And then you've even got the, they've even sort of mimicked the shape of the the, the um, motor drive. There. Yes, they have, yeah. they? which is good because you get that hand grip on it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Because I've got sort of fairly beefy fingers, so and these are actually they're remarkably small little bodies. Mm. Just take that off there, and you know there's wow. there's nothing to it. It's, no, it's not, that's, is it? that's it. So it's it, very mean, tiny. It just sort of slips, right? Which is mildly terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's no, no there's no sort of grip naturally with it, is there? But, no. Uh, you know, and that was the same with the with the OM1 as well, wasn't it? All of them. Yeah. Is that body exactly the same size as the OM1? Is it, is it uh, identical? identical? Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, mm. they just used the same chassis for the whole lot. Right. To, right. to a greater or lesser extent, they just put more stuff in them. Excellent. More yeah. sort of electronics and, and clever stuff as it became yeah. available in terms of the technology. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. And I tell you what, this has got one of the best meters. Speaking of um, electronics, it's mm. got a superb meter and one of the best I've ever used. Right. It's it's got a, a, a sort of a multi spot. Okay. Um, so what you've got is uh, is that button there. Mm. Okay. Um, and as you're as you're shooting, mm. um, if you if you've got a sort of particularly challenging scene, so you've got something over there, something over there. They're both backlit. Right. But they've both got different lights on them themselves. Right. What you can do is aim it at one. Okay. Hit the spot button. Aim at okay. another. Hit the spot button there, and it will take an average of those two spots. Um, That's very or clever. Anything up to eight. And it'll take it. So it'll, it'll it remembers what the what the, the meter reading was from over there. Yeah, that's really clever because I mean I don't think there's too many modern cameras that have got a similar system, have they? I, mean, I they, think they, they might use a different sort of matrix where they maybe do it simultaneously. But yeah, but this, this seems very much more like you've got the control there, where yeah. that every average is going to end up depending on what point you select in the frame. Absolutely, I, th I think a couple of the higher end cannons might have it, mm, like okay. one D's, but um, uh, nothing else like this. No, and no. it's absolutely brilliant. Um, We've got a little highlight and shadow button there. They're just sort of compensation buttons, effectively. Okay. But it just saves you having to sort of stand there and do sort of logarithmic maths. In yes. Your head. <laughs> Which, I, I don't I, know about you, Molly, but for me, I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not happening. I, I'm an engineering not, student, and that just, <laughs> no. Just, you know. just it's not going to happen. <laughs> and I'm not an engineering student, and that's probably why. You yeah. Know. <laughs> you have to do that sort of stuff. I'm going to stick to photography. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other th great thing about the Olympus um, range of cameras, the OM OMs, um, was not only the bodies, but the lenses that came with it as well. Yeah. Um, the Zuiko range of lenses that came out with these cameras. Hmm. It's just, it's world renowned. If you've never shot with some eco glass, I recommend you go out and do it immediately now. I mean, just shut this video off and go and buy some because uh, you won't regret it. Um, but talk us through this is the, um, this is the Zuiko lens on here. Is this the, 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 the 518? Is this? It, this is the 14. Oh, it's the 14. Yeah. Wow. Um, no, nice fast glass. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's absolutely stunning. Um, mm. But I mean, the thing is, the, uh, the entire range of, of Zuiko, Zuiko, um, 
people are culturally terribly local than Zukio's. <laughs> Zukio, I love Zukio, that. Zukio, Zukio. Yeah. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> It, it sounds, sounds <laughs> touch to an English ear. To a Japanese yeah. ear, it probably sounds terrible. But yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but I mean, the thing is, all of these lenses, they all, um, we mentioned in, in the last video, they seem very much like a sort of a family. Mm. Um, you know, the glass is all very similar. It's, it's got a very sort of similar fingerprint yeah. between, between the lenses. Mm. Um, you know, you shoot with any other system. Mm. Um, and you can say, oh, it was shot with that lens, or it was shot with that one. Yeah. I mean, even you, you shoot a lot of uh, Pentax stuff, don't you? Yes, I do. And so very much with those, like the difference between the Takumar lenses, uh, you can tell which, which focal length uh, you were using, which lens yeah. you were using, because they have, although there's a, there's a sort of family characteristic to them, you know, the colour profiles differ quite significantly, yeah. um, the contrast profiles, um, how they handle glare, all that stuff is is very different, and even in terms of the, uh, I mean, there's very little chromatic aberration things like that with them. Yeah. But just in terms of distortions and things with the lens that you, you just naturally get, it's not a it's not a, a, a it's it's not a family in the same way. No. Um, and the nice thing about the Zuiko lenses is, is that if you are shooting with um, the entire OM system, uh, it's very easy to keep a consistent style with them because yeah. you know they do have that similar feel to <clears> them, don't they? Well, absolutely. Yeah. No, you, you're shooting with one of these guys, and um, with your Pentaxes, mm. maybe even a. A 50 mil f2 and a 18. You can say, well, that was shot with that one. Yes. Whereas yeah. this, with uh, with these guys, you can't say, oh, it was shot with a, a 51 4 or 35 2 8 or something. Mm. It was shot with uh, a Zuko. With a Zuko. Yeah. 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 And they all have this lovely gold coating too. Yeah. And, absolutely. Yeah. yeah no, uh, I don't. It's probably a little bit difficult to pick it up there, but um, no, it's it's, it's beautiful. And it's they a lovely are, colour for that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Mm. And they are very similar um, between the between the lenses. And okay. I think that's 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 largely um, what's responsible for it. Yeah, I think you're right. And you know, that combined with the ergonomics and the build quality, I mean, this camera is nudging 30 years old now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and as you say, it just works you know, the day it came out of the factory. Absolutely. My OM1 works exactly the same as the day it came out of the factory, yeah. and it will do in another 30 years. Yeah, well. oh, no, mate, these, these will be shooting well after we've gone. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, you, you mentioned the ergonomics. Um, yeah. mm. It's just some of the little things. Mm. Um, like, um, if you've never shot with an OM before, Mm. Um, you you might not uh, you might not be used to the fact that that is your shutter speed. Mm. Um, it's brilliant. Everything is just there. You don't need to be sort of mucking around twiddling. There's no knobs, knobs to twiddle. Is there? It's all in one yeah. place. So you've, so got, you've got shutter you've speed. Got shutter speed. Then you've got your aperture focus, or focus. And then you've and got your aperture, aperture there. Um, and with the zoom lenses, that's all here as well. And then you've Perfect. got your stop down is is there as well. If you want your mm. sort of preview of a yeah. sort of depth of uh, field in there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's all there. It's all just nicely to hand. You don't it's need lovely. to be mucking around with, with sort of buttons and levers and knobs and dials and all this sort of thing. Perfect. The other thing I really like about the OEM series um, is the, um, the the little rest um, with the with the. Uh, I don't know if this one, maybe this one doesn't do it, but in, with the OM1, you've got to up, actually cock it first. Yeah, you yeah you've got to, you, you have a little, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it, it, you can hook your thumb underneath the advance lever, like that, yeah. and uh, it, it just makes it a lot more simple, because we were talking without the motor grip, it's quite slippery and, and will fall out of your, your fingers. Yeah. But having that little thing there, and I miss that when I'm shooting my Pentax, um, I do that, and of course it, it advances the yeah. film. And <laughs> <laughs> I throw the camera on yeah. the ground, which isn't so good. Um, Not really. No, I don't like that very much. They don't like it a lot. Although no. actually, I mean, the Pentax survives, and I think this probably yeah, will as well. Yeah. You, you chip the tarmac, but uh, oh, yeah. you know, other than that, you'd be fine. But you, you hold it, and it, it, it's just nice little touches like that that make them so yeah. good. Now, the other thing that we've got on the table here is a range of rather interesting lenses. These are the, mm. the Tamron SP lenses. Um, Tamron Adaptals. Adaptals. Yeah. So talk us through those, because I mean, this is something I wasn't really aware of, and um, okay. you've got a nice range to, to, to talk through here. So. Um, well, I mean, uh, first of all, I'd like to start by saying, mm. look, people to go out and they, they'll buy into a, a, a camera system. They'll, they'll yeah. go out and get something. Mm. And then after that, all they'll get is lenses by that manufacturer. Yeah. Um, which isn't necessarily the way forward. They just no. go, oh, well, you know, it's Sigma, Tamron. They just dismiss them out of hand. Mm. Not really the case. Um, mm. These guys are every bit as good, and if not better than some of the, um, some of the glass that I've used uh, from original manufacturers. Okay. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, and then the other thing is they do actually fill a few gaps. I mean, right. here I've got the, um, it's uh, an SP2448. Um, mm, okay. And it's a 3.5 to 3.8, so more right. or less a, a 3.5 constant. Yeah. Um, and it's a nice dinky bit of glass, uh, but you know, it, it's it's a really nice sort of usable focal length. That's lovely, isn't it? And it's, um, a, it's a lovely wide front element on there. Yeah, You're going to get a lot absolutely. of lighting through that, aren't you? I mean, yeah, it's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Um, it's eye catching as well. So mm. I mean, if you do get somebody that's getting a little bit, you know, I, I use this for street shooting. Mm. Um, and if you do get somebody that's that's looking at you, going, 
what's going on. Yeah. At least with something like this, you sort of look like you're meant to be there. You yes. Look a bit more sort of professional. You look a bit more sort of refined. Um, That's a really good point, actually. Yeah. Um, if you want to have a look at the, the video up on screen now, what camera is best for street photography, big or small? It's quite an interesting point yeah. because we as great, street photographers video, always yeah. think, oh, thank you, Ollie. Yeah. Uh, we always think <laughs> of street photographers that having something very small and, uh, and, and discreet is best for street photography. But actually, for, particularly for women, um, that's not always the case. If you've got a very tiny camera, they can think you could be, you, know, you look a bit sort of uh, a bit bit pervy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like you're trying to take pictures of them, you know, um, you know, for uh, nefarious purposes. And it's yes. not the case, you know, but something like that, yeah. you know, th there's no doubt that you're a, you're a photographer and you're a photography yeah. fan because you've got a really nice camera, there's a lovely big bit of glass on there. Yeah. And, um, and it looks the part, doesn't it? That's, well, exactly. You know, and if nothing else, it becomes a, something of a talking point. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are going, oh, what's that? Oh, well, this is, this is actually quite old. And people are going, mm -hmm. oh, well, well really you can still get that yeah oh, cool. and there's something less threatening about a film camera yeah. as well I yeah think, absolutely it? Yeah. absolutely um but no it's, it's a really really nice usable lens it's mm. a nice wide angle um to, yeah. to uh, just be on normal. the perfect normal yeah 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 yeah, um, it's a really usable everyday, yeah. especially for street photography but I, I shoot a, a largely 28 mil um just because I like that sort of ultra wide thing, I like to sort of yeah. get fairly close. Um, but you know, the rest of the time I'll be using either a 35 or a 50. And yeah. so you know, this is this is covering that that optimal range for street work, isn't yeah. it? You know, and having it all in one relatively light and compact lens is perfect. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, you say relatively mm. light. It's Tamron's. Oh, it's a ton. Oh, does it really? Yeah. But look, <laughs> have you felt the weight of this thing? Let's have a look at that. Right. You guess. So <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> holy cow. I mean. <laughs> That's, 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 that's pushing a kilo, isn't it? I think, oh, yeah, I mean, thereabouts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I you can do reps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm tired now. I'll tell you I'll what, we can, we can have one in each arm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's extraordinary. I mean, I, you know, that's, um, that's getting on for the weight of like a, you know, 70 to 200, 28 or something, which, yeah. is, interesting, which is a heavy lens. Wow. I mean, so, so they didn't skimp on build quality, did they? I no. Because, they, 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 you know, I think that's another you know, misconception with a lot of um, Tamron, Sigma, right. that sort of stuff, Takina, yeah. um, that, you know, because it's third party manufacturers, they're going to, and they're cheaper. They're going to be using cheaper materials, and, and this no. very much isn't. This is hewn from, you know, sort of brass and iron ore and granite, yeah. isn't it? Really, I mean, that's a solid, solid. The rocks of, of uh, the rocks of Mount Olympus. Yes, it is. Yeah, the Pum <laughs> Ching. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah there we go. <laughs> Nicely segued there. Yeah. We're feeling that. So this, um, talk us through this lens. This is a this is a longer. What have we got here? This is a, a ninety-two and a half. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, so this is ninety-two-five, and it's actually got the uh, the two times teleconverter, um, which makes it a one eighty. Wow. But it's mm, a superb cool. macro. So mm. with the, um, with just this bit. Yeah, it's a um, it's a one to two, but then you mm. stick that one there, and it's 180 one to one macro. Oh, perfect! Which yeah, is fantastic. which is great. You lose mm. a couple of stops, but sure. you know if you're shooting mm. macro, you're not going to be hand holding anyway. So. No, you're not. That's it. Most of the stuff that you're doing macro shots with uh, isn't going to be moving around so much. Uh, no. And and if it is, if you're doing I don't know insect work or something like that, these days yeah. I mean you can get such uh, such fine grain fast film. Yeah. You know, well, uh, so, you know you can you can shoot stuff at 1600. Uh, you know, when 3200, it actually looks it's all right. A, it's you a know, usable it's, shot. Yeah, completely. So you know, yeah. that's absolutely. Uh, and you know, you, you sacrifice a little bit in uh, in light, but there are so many ways around that. You know, you You've just throw exactly. more lights at it. That, you know, that's it. Put yeah. some lights on. Put some studio lights on. Use that. Yeah. Talk and us through um, with these um, with, with these uh, adaptor lenses. Um, what the uh, what, what the sort of characteristics of the of the glass is like. I mean, it, what, what do you get in terms of chromatic aberration or, or, or barrel distortion or pin cushion? Is there anything like that that's particularly noticeable? Do you know what? I mean, the uh, the twenty four forty eight. I've I've only just got it. It's a fairly okay. sort of recent one. But mm. um, from what I've seen on it, mm. it's again it's a cracking lens. Um, I mean, the sharpness on this thing throughout, mm. uh, wide open, stop down. Um, you know, it tends to be at its best to sort of f11, but mm. even wide open, um, the sharpness just sort of draws you in. You can sort of Fantastic. go swimming in the detail. <laughs> Lovely. Um, and with this thing, again, mm. it's it's wonderfully sharp, um, mm. and the bokeh it's actually mm. really nice. So it's a usable awesome. portrait lens as well. Yeah, lovely. Because there are mm. a lot of macros that you know they they they're great at what they do, but yeah. they're not terribly flexible. Yeah. Whereas this thing was actually marketed as a, a portrait macro. Right. Uh, that's um, interesting, isn't it? Because yeah, again, I mean, you look at the. Um, like the, the the sort of Nikon stuff, like the um, like the eighty five one four, for example. Um, yeah. you know, it's uh, or the, the the macro one hundred five even, uh, and it's you know it's great at macro, but it's not so good when it comes to doing the, the portrait stuff because yeah. you know it doesn't have that nice uh, sort of soft bokeh that you you want from a portrait well, lens. Yeah, know? absolutely. Whereas with one of these guys, um, I mean, by all means, go and check out some examples. Mm. Um, you know, read a, re a few reviews on it. But um, I mean, there, there are some um, some shots. That it, it's just it's really nice. The, everything behind and the front of it. Perfect. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Well, um, what we'd like to do, Ollie, if it's possible, is get you on a, a future show. We'll, we'll have um, we'll have some shots when you when you've um, yeah, we'll have some examples of, of things yeah. that we can put out and talk about those. Um, I know in the future we're going to be doing a TLR episode at some point. Yeah, it might absolutely. be when you come back from America or before. We don't know yet, yeah, but uh, no, absolutely. there'll be one in the future in the pipeline for that. But uh, perhaps at that point we can have some pictures up on screen of yeah. uh, no, you know, having been through um, put these lenses through their paces. Because I think yeah. there's a lot of people that. Um, uh, will be in the same boat as I was, which is not really aware of these. And you know, yeah. I mean, we'll talk us through, through the, um, the the price. I know the Zuiko stuff. Um, I mean, you can get some really good deals on it, but uh, some of it's now the rarer ones, particularly. They're going up in price. Yeah. Being Tamron, does that keep the price uh, into the you know, lower I mean, layers of the stratosphere, or is it uh, getting more expensive now? People um, people are beginning mm. to sort of take notice of these things. Right. Um, and the other beauty of them is um, the clues in the title and mm. Mm. so you can actually sort of take that bit off and then that's a lens and then they've got their, their little sort of adapters on there brilliant so you right. can take off these adapters mm. and you can stick on an FD or mm. a screw 42 or an okay. F mount or mm. whatever you want awesome um, so a lot of people are picking up on this and going oh well actually you can get some superb lenses for not a lot of money yeah um, yeah so the prices are only up and up but um, I mean for, for the, the 90 to 5 mm. I mean, that's not bad, is it? I mean, for, yeah. for what it is, not yeah. super. And, and what, what new lens from any manufacturer can you buy for 100 quid? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, even the cheap stuff. You know, like, I think, yeah. what, what's an 1855 kit lens cost from Canon or something now? I mean, it's going to be yeah. more than that, I should think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah somewhere in that territory, yeah. yeah. You know, and you get yeah. these and the, you know, it's, it's about having something that's quality. And okay, you know, with these, yes, you have to focus it yourself. But, you know. <laughs> But people yeah. used to do that, and, yeah. and, and they were fine with it. <laughs> you know, yeah. we, 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 I think a lot of photographers now get, get scared of, of, of uh, manual focus because they yeah. think, oh, if I miss focus, if it's a little bit off. You know, frankly, there's more important things I think anyway than absolute crispness in every single photo. Absolutely. You, know, you look at, for example, the cover of the Clash. I can't remember what, what uh, London's Calling. You know, the one yeah, where yeah, uh, where he's, he's smashing, smashing yeah. the guitar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's blurry. Shocking. Yeah, it's awful. It's blurry. Yeah. Um, the lighting's terrible. Um, they had to really push the film in order to get any exposure because you know it's, it's, like, it's all grainy and stuff, yeah. but it's got emotion in it, and yeah, uh, you know, and, and yeah, okay, it isn't fo crisply focused yeah, in, but uh, you know, who cares? It's, frankly, you know. it's well, yeah, it's it's ten percent gear and, and ninety percent um, content Idea. ability. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah nicely put. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. We'll have some t-shirts printed out. Yeah, ten percent gear, ninety percent idea. Yeah, yeah. Go. okay, all right, we've go. got an order already. We've got the merch in. Fantastic, yeah. great stuff. Well, listen, Ollie, thanks very much for joining me. Not at all. Subscribe up at the top there, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Right. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs>